Quad C6, I've spent just a ton of time this weekend flying all three of these quads back to back to back and switching around um, props on the different motors, uh, trying 48 versus uh, 24 kilohertz uh, PWM on the ESCs, and it's really eye-opening. It's it just it's so it's eye-opening in the sense that like whenever I hear something like a statement like you know this is a really special uh, prop or a motor or something like that. It's all in context, and it's specifically in the context of like, what is the interactions between the things? Because all three of these quads are are excellent, and I could tell you they're fantastic. But then if I change one thing, they become terrible. So, kind of going through that. For example, um, these are the Hyperlite 1103 motors. These are 12,600 kV. And they're the lightest motors of the batch, and obviously the least wide. And with these motors, um, put them on JSC 24 kilohertz, put them on these uh, HQ 3015 props, and balance the props a little bit. That's what I did here. Um, so I spun up the props in Betaflight. This one had a really bad shutter, so I put one prop screw in there, kind of glued in, because these don't have screw holes. And that took out it, it didn't make it smooth by any means, but it, it took out the big shutter to where it made it flyable. But anyways, on this quad, you build it up that way. So you do do the HQ3015s and um, put it on the 24 kilohertz JAC, and it, it just flies. It flies awesome. I mean, it's it's really great. It's got a certain like really hard to describe feel where it just feels um, it's it's connected but not like harsh. It's got a um, really intuitive kind of like graceful feel to it. Take the same exact quad, switch, and, and so the, the one the one problem with it, okay, so um, with these motors, they're on 24 kilohertz. They're, especially with these props, these props are a little amp hungry, and then you add to that, you know, 12,600 kV, and you add to that 24 kilohertz um, on the ESC, that's going to be your this year least efficient setup, and if you're getting after it, you're going to struggle to get three minutes on a 525 um, mAh battery, and so that might that might be a total deal breaker for you. But for me, if I'm getting over three minutes and I love the three minutes, it's like heck yeah, let me fly it. The one thing though that that makes it that it makes it a little bit of deal breaker for me. It's it's crazy hot out here. I mean, it's like above 110 and on. 24 kilohertz, this FC just runs a, too, a little too hot, it overheats, versus on 48 kilohertz, it um, it will do okay. It, the, the temperature will stay down, it'll, uh, and the switching between 24 and 48 kilohertz, it does, it's like a difference of like five to eight degrees Celsius on the FC. So, um, on that setup, I can say it flies amazing, but I could also do the same thing, um, kind of in a misleading way of saying, put the 30 Gemfan 3018 props on it, and suddenly these motors just bog down. They just can't, they're just not in their own on the 3018 props. And and then I could say, these motors are terrible. You need 1202.5s to, you know, and to be a three inch quad, it's just, you know, that 1202.5 is, is just so much better. And, in reality, it's it's not better. It's like you just have to find the the things that work well. And so the 1103 motors, you know, they don't have the same um, diameter on them. And yeah, they need the help. They need the extra torque that you get from 24 kilohertz. You need that extra pop. And with that setup, it just it flies super well, super intuitive, feels really good. Um, and but yeah, it's a little bit short on the flight time. And, and that's just kind of what it is. But if you're going after that feel, um, you, you can't quite get that feel out of any of the other setups here. Um, also, so, you know, so then take the same exact setup and say, well, you, you know, you want to prioritize um, flight time. And then you go put on 48 kilohertz. And it just, it just, it's not bad. But it's not nearly the same quad on 48 kilohertz. It just doesn't quite fly as well, and so it's just so fascinating that like, and and you can't tune it out too. You can you can bump up the pilots a little bit and try and get the 48 kilohertz a little bit tighter. You know, tighten it up a little bit. But there's a limit to what pids can do, and 
when you're kind of fighting physics a little bit of using this small diameter motor with a big prop, um, you just need that ESC torque. And you're just gonna have to take the, um, take the hit on efficiency if you want a good flying quad. I mean, if you're not as picky as I am, and, and I think a part of the reason that I get so picky is because I fly in a small space and I fly it like over and over and over and over again. And things become really obvious to me uh, when I fly things over and over again of the differences. And, um, and so when I have that direct comparisons and flying the same things over and over again, it, it really brings out the qualities, it makes me be able to assess the qualities. But anyway, so, um, yeah, so if I were, if I wanted to like hype this build, I, I could, I could tell you that this, you know, this quad is the best thing since sliced bread. And to kind of make that comparison um, that way and convince you of it too, I could say, yeah, go ahead, take this quad and put on those gem fan or the HQ3015 props and this doesn't fly away well on those props. On the other hand, uh, take this quad, so these are the Flyway 12 2.5s, and put on these 3018s and something, there's some like, I don't know what they're doing with these motors, there's some like dark voodoo magic onto here, but this thing just gets so crazy responsive. And for me, that's, I, I like the way that flies. Like, I, I do like super responsive quads, and out of all three of these, this, this is my favorite build here. Um, this is the one and but it, it's so responsive and, and much and more so than any of my other any of my other quads um that it takes me a second to get used to it but once i get used to it and jump to something else like everything else to me feels like it's just i, I want that back but you're giving up a little bit um but on this quad anyway so to get a reasonable flight time yes you need the 48 kilohertz um, but this thing even on 48 kilohertz just it does fine with these 3018 props and and it's interesting because with the 3018 props, you know, they've got a little bit more pitch than the 3015s. And, and it seems like this motor needs a little bit of that load because when you put the 3015s, um, they, it gets anemic. It gets really anemic on the punch out. And the responsiveness, the the sort of like how responsive it is um, to your stick inputs, it just, it's not as good. It's interesting. It's like these motors need that load. They're, they're capable of like, giving that little grunt to turn that load and so when you when you take them out of their sweet spot and you put them on the 13 30 15 props the hq props you just lose what's good about these motors and it, it's super interesting i don't know it the combinations of how things interact it's really really interesting to me and i don't entirely understand why these two are so different so on these FPV cycle motors, this again, so 1202.5, you know, on paper, it's the same motor, 1202.5, 11,500 kV. And on these motors also, um, you know, I'm dealing the 3018 props. I haven't flown them much on the 3015 because I tried drilling out the 3015s and they just vibrated like crazy and I kind of abandoned it. And I, I should go back, for sake of completeness, I should go back to it and give these a shot on um, 3015s. But on, on this quad, it, it's interesting. The, the big kind of make or break point for me on this quad is actually the um, 24 versus 48 kilohertz. So for a while, this, this quad was kind of sitting on, I kept kind of pulling it out, flying it, and being like, yeah, I mean, it flies nice, but it's just so mellow. It just wasn't for me. And so it was kind of sitting on the bench a little bit. And then I was like, well, let me see, let me see, let me go back. You know, when I first flew this, when I first flew these motors, I tried 48 versus 24 kilohertz. I didn't notice that big of a difference, but you know, my flying has improved, my tuning has improved. So then went back and put this on 24 kilohertz and it brought this quad off the bench. It is not nearly as responsive as the Flywoo. That PP cycles, they're still not responsive, but it's good. Like it improves it, it makes it, for me anyways, it makes it a fun quad to fly again. And I'm, I'm really glad I found, figured that out because I've got a bunch of these motors and I wanna use them up. I don't wanna just like let them sit there and you know spend a lot of money on these motors. So I wanna use them, I wanna enjoy them. And I'm not excited about just spending my money on something and then not using it. But it, that gets back to, so the hype is like, there's so much hype about 48 kilohertz and so much flight time and this and that. And it's just like, 
it's funny, it's true. This quad is super efficient, especially if you go to 48 kilohertz, but it's just a little bit lame. And yeah, you can try and push the pids a little bit to get some of it back, but there's just only so much you can do. And so the, the reason that it's relevant is because these motors, they have kind of like, they've got good top end, but they don't, even though they're wide motors, they're 1202.5s, they don't seem to have the ability to kind of snap that they just don't have the responsiveness. They kind of spool up. They control the prop well, but they do it in a slow spooling fashion, especially on 48 kilohertz. And the difference is when you have 24 versus 40 kilohertz on the ESC. So when you have you have dead time. So whenever your your ESC kind of makes a pulse or things like that, there's there's dead times, and um, the the more times you have to cross that deadline, it accumulates, and you have less like on time. So with 24 kilohertz, you get stronger braking, and you also get stronger response. So there's more torque, there's a little bit more top end, and stronger braking. But you also have heat problems. With this quad on uh, 24 kilohertz, you know, so when I fly around without on um, 48 kilohertz, it'll be sitting, in this kind of weather, it's sitting at around 70 degrees Celsius. On 24 kilohertz, it's around 75, 76 Celsius, um, and it does okay. The, Court hasn't freaked out. I'm probably shortening the lifespan on it, but it is what it is. I live in a really hot place. But with these motors, they just like having the extra torque from using the shorter, the you know the the lower frequency. They just like that. They like they need the braking, they need the torque, and you know it it flies on 24 kilohertz. It's like it's. It's kind of it's fun to fly again for me, and I'm really pleased to see that because I was really bummed about not liking it. And so once I tune it in that way, it's more it's it's interesting. So this one on 48 kilohertz, if if I just had both of these quads and I said okay, both of them on 40 kilohertz, both of them on the 4018 uh, 3018 gen fan props, I would just say that these Flywoo Robos are just so much better. Yes, they're a little bit less efficient. Yes, they've got a little bit less top end. But they're so much more responsive, and these FPV cycles are just so mellow that this motor is hands down. This is the special motor. This one is fantastic. But you kind of make those adjustments. You make the little tweaks, and you say, okay, let's put this on the 24 kilohertz. Now the efficiency is about the same. The flight time between the two, this with the flywoos on 48 kilohertz and the FPV cycle on 24 kilohertz, it's interesting because the flight time kind of it, it converges towards the mean. And the flight characteristics also kind of get it. this one, you know, kind of tightens up, gets a little bit more responsive. It is still not as responsive, but if you're looking for a little bit more top end, then you can recommend FPV cycle motor. If you're looking for that, just honestly, I don't know how these motors do it, but if you're looking for that responsiveness on the sticks, just like when you put in a input on the stick, it just it just goes. It's, it's wild. It kind of it, it's mind boggling. But anyways. You know, it's a decision about preference, and so um, the reason. So part of the reason I've been I've been digging down on this is because um, there's kind of some discussions about maybe trying to develop a motor and like which which way would you go? Because all three of these motors and setups, there's there's a little bit that can be tuned up, a little bit that can be different. Like so, one of the nice parts about the hyperlights with the 1103 12600 kv that's a nice kv that you can go ahead and throw on those t65 props you can run a you can build this onto a smaller build and you can run 65 millimeter props and so the motor has some more versatility plus the weight is less it just simply weighs less and so that's going to be less harsh on your equipment so you're less likely to break frames you're less likely to break cameras and whatever with crashes because you're just carrying less weight. And there's also just something to be said for how quads fly. Like, um, when you have less weight, it, they, they just have a different feel in the air, and um, and that might be something that you're interested in. But anyways, um, so then it, it kind of goes into this interesting question of like, how do you, fig how do you even figure out like, how to do this and, and I kind of see what's sort of interesting is I, I think if you know when so when Ruby was kind of developing these FPV cycle motors I suspect that if he had a different prop available I suspect if he had 3015s and if they were balanced 
I suspect that this motor wouldn't be this motor. Like, I don't like. I think you would you you'd go in a slightly different direction because the interaction between things is what makes such a big difference. And also, like, I think if 48 kilohertz. And, and I think, and I'm making assumptions here, but I think 48 kilohertz came out after these motors were sort of like kind of fed through and developed and stuff. And so I think if 48 kilohertz had come out before these motors were developed, I think you might end up with a different motor also. But so in the micro world, um, definitely on 65 millimeter props and smaller, I think 48 kilohertz has sort of become the gold standard, interestingly enough. Um, but the three inch, it's sort of that weird tweener size. Like, you know, once you go up to uh, five inch quads, 24 or 24 kilohertz, that's really your gold standard. Maybe you kind of, you know, some quads like different kilohertz and they just do, but in general with the bigger quads, you just kind of want, um, uh, 24 kilohertz. The benefit of 48 diminishes goes away. So it's kind of interesting. Like if you're trying to think about, you know, developing a motor it, it depends like it's so you, you got to have kind of mapped out what um what you want the whole package to look like you know do you want to go so these gem fan props these are these are the most consistently um reliable in terms of the balance you know but the pitch is a little bit high and so if you develop a motor that's going to be able to turn these 3018 props, that motor is probably just going to be in, inefficient enough. It, that motor is probably going to be no good to spin, like the T65 props. It's probably not going to be um, able to spin at high enough. You know, it's not going to have enough KV um, to do the smaller props. Um, and if you go like you know full bore of just wanting to really control this 3018, um, you know, with these like flywheel robos. Uh, you just you're kind of locked in you can't even go you know you're not even going to do well on these 3015 prompts which is just it's kind of interesting so um i do think i like i really like the idea of the slightly higher um taller stator i think it gives you more wiggle room so 2.5 or and, and this might these might not even be a full 2.5 it might be maybe they are anyways but Definitely on a, a two millimeter tall uh, stator, you just you lose that dynamic range. So the the taller your stator, the bigger your um, uh, power band is, and so you have just you have more wiggle room to be able to go and fly on different props and still stay in your power band. And so with kind of adjusting things. Um, you know, if you wanted to fly both on uh, 65 millimeter props and 3-inch props, especially since you have these 3015s, then 1103, I think, is going to be the way to go. But, um, and hopefully these, I heard a rumor that these are a little bit better balanced now. But if, if you're just annoyed, if you don't want to deal with um, the issues of trying to balance out props or dealing with poorly balanced props, which there, there's a lot of reason not to deal with it. I mean, you're just, you're you're hurting yourself mechanically. You know, what goes into the PID loop and what you need to what you need to filter, like when you have vibrations going in, it's a bad thing. It messes you up. But um, if you want that that range, then I think the 1103 is the way to go. And you can probably build it up a little bit lighter. But you're probably gonna have a hard time going to, you know, the full 3018, that bumping up the pitch to the 3018. And so it's it's kind of it's just it's interesting. So you know clearly here, um, not a lot of conclusions. Um, I don't think any good video ever has conclusions, but um, I, I think some nice tips here. Anyway, so my my tips take away take home. Holy cow, twenty minutes. Um, take home messages on this one is all three of these motors you can get them to fly excellent both of these props you can get them to fly excellent but you need to pair things up and so the pairs the combinations i really like on the fpv cycle um 1202.5s i really like the gem fan 3018 prop and i like this with 24 kilohertz um esc pwm um, i think that 24 kilohertz gives these just much better control of the prop. You need the braking, you need the torque, and that 
turns this into something that I want to fly again, which makes me happy. It's good. Um, fly with Robos. Honestly, I didn't. I, I should fly these more on 24. I haven't done that for a while, um, but I just you just don't. Maybe maybe it would help a little bit on the top end, but in terms of responsiveness, you you just don't need it. I mean, this thing is so crazy responsive. So, but these don't these motors. There's not enough speed. There's speed there to turn the shallower prop. The 3015, it just it falls apart on you. Uh, and the way so the way, way I re recommend these flywheel robos is. 3018 props and 48 kilohertz uh, on the ESCs, 48 kilohertz PWM, and this is it is my favorite combination. Um, and then if you want to go super light, if you want to go with the hyperlight, you know, hopefully they come back in stock someday. Supposedly they will. Um, hyperlight 1103s, 12,600 kV um, on a three-inch prop. So if you're spinning a T65, I think you just go ahead and do the 48 kilohertz um, to get that efficiency popped up a little bit for you. But on to spin a three-inch props, um, you got to go down to 3015. You got to deal with the balance issues. You got to try and do these little funny things like putting a screw, just one, to balance out to take out the big shutter, and um, you got to do that. But this can fly really great. It's it's got a certain feel to it that I don't get out of the other quads and it's really really enjoyable but on 24 kilohertz which is how I recommend to fly this um, the efficiency is pretty low you're gonna be you know if you're overly aggressive you're gonna be struggling to get three minutes and it's also if you're flying really hot temperatures it's gonna push the temperature in your ESCs and your FC and then um, I don't think I already did I do this. Um, FPs, I think, holy cow, I'm probably losing my mind here. But in case I didn't, uh, FPV cycle, 3018 props, and uh, 24 kilohertz. All right. Till next time. Cheers.